Good day, learners. Once again, here's your mentor. I am Ray Japus, and I'm a test preparations coach for the past 25 years for the NCLEX RN. Now, due to some requests and messages that we received, we've got nice feedback from the pointers that we shared related to um, EKG or ECG interpretation. Now, we received some um, requests to also highlight um, some of the things that we want you to master related to cranial nerve assessments. So without further ado, as your wish is my command, here are the pointers on cranial nerve assessment for the NCLEX RN. Reminder, before we proceed any further, to receive a printed copy of the essential aspects of this presentation, send us an email at this address, mentor.raygapus at gmail.com. The printed copy is actually given for free. So you just have to send us your email and we'll send you your copy. So let's proceed. And uh, if I would be turning back the wheels of time and I would ask myself, which among the 12 cranial nerves should I need to focus on and master before I take the NCLEX? I can only think of five. Why five? Well, because these cranial nerves are frequently um, not remembered properly. The functions are interchanged. And sometimes there are cranial nerves within the five options or the, the choices I've made in which the functions overlap. So it's kind of confusing sometimes for our colleagues when they're trying to remember these cranial nerves, especially when you're already taking your end lecture in front of the computer, the anxiety is just so high. And sometimes you have difficulty trying to think and organize your thoughts. Well, to, simply, to simplify things, here are my recommended pointers that you need to master for cranial nerves. Let's begin. Now, the first two would be your optic nerve, that's cranial nerve two, and your oculomotor nerve, which is cranial nerve three. So optic nerve, your cranial nerve two is actually a sensory nerve, and it is responsible for our sense of sight, for vision. Oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve three, on the other hand, is responsible for the motor movement of the eyes, as well as our pupillary response, because it's a motor nerve. Now, these two cranial nerves, even if one is sensory and the other one is motor, have a specific function in which they overlap. And that is related to the accommodation reflex. Now, you might be asking me, what's the accommodation reflex? Now, the accommodation reflex actually refers to a change in the shape of the pupils as the eyes focus on an object that is moved from a distance towards the tip of the nose. And as the object, nears the tip of the nose, there's a tendency for the patient to look cross-eyed, and eventually the pupils react by constricting. So we call that accommodation reflex. Related to the functions of cranial nerve two, your optic nerve, and cranial nerve three, your oculomotor nerve. Then we have trigeminal nerve, your cranial nerve five, and facial nerve, cranial nerve seven. Your cranial nerve five, is actually a sensory motor nerve. So the sensory function pertains to facial sensation. And how do we assess that? We make use of pins, okay, run it through the course of the facial nerve, and then the cotton ball, which is also used to assess for the corneal reflex. The motor root of the trigeminal nerve is assessed by asking the patient to chew or to ask the client to clench the jaw or the teeth and then can also assess the jaw jerk reflex. Now, how do we assess the jaw jerk reflex? We usually use the index finger with the mouth with the chin and with the mouth is slightly open or partially open. We use a reflex hammer. So imagine this is a reflex hammer and we stroke it downwards. It's like that. That's actually assessing the jaw jerk reflex. Now, on the other hand, the facial nerve is also a sensory motor nerve. The sensory root is responsible for the sense of taste. And when you talk about the sense of taste, it's on the anterior two thirds of the tongue responsible for um, sweet and uh, salty taste. And then how do we assess that? We use swabs, which are deep in various solutions. And then we ask the patient to, to name the taste. Okay, as the swab is actually applied over the tongue. And then the motor root of the facial nerve is responsible for facial movement. 
And uh, to assess this, we ask the patient to actually frown, to close the eyes, to puff the cheek, purse the lips, or to reveal the teeth. He asked the client to smile. Reveal the teeth, that's actually the seventh cranial nerve or the facial nerve. We, if we ask the patient to clench the teeth or the jaw, that's actually your trigeminal nerve. Now, the fifth and the last among my picks to highlight for this specific video is actually your hypoglossal nerve, which is your cranial nerve number 12. It is a motor nerve and it's responsible for tongue movement. Okay, so let's summarize. Once again, cranial nerve two, the optic nerve is responsible for our sense of vision. It's a sensory nerve. Cranial nerve three, the oculomotor nerve is a motor nerve responsible for eye movement and pupillary reflex. Cranial nerve five, the trigeminal nerve is a sensory motor nerve responsible for facial sensation and chewing. Cranial nerve number seven, the facial nerve is also a sensory motor nerve responsible for facial muscle movement and the sense of taste. And finally, cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve, which is responsible for tongue movement. And it is because it's a motor nerve. So let's move on and try to identify some functional concepts that would kind of remind us what are the concepts that we need to focus on. These are the concepts that I'd like you to hear when you're taking the test. It's as if you're having auditory hallucination, okay? So the first functional concept, pupillary dilation is related to non-conduction of cranial nerve three because if your cranial nerve three is normal, the reaction should be the pupils would actually constrict. So when there's um, dilation, it's related to non-conduction of cranial nerve three. Accommodation or the convergence reflex is related to the functions of cranial nerves two and three. Now to test for the accommodation or convergence reflex, ask the client to follow a target as it moves closer to the nose. And when this happens, you would usually note that the pupils are constricting. Next, asking the client to show the teeth is a test for cranial nerve seven, while asking the client to clench the jaw or the teeth is a function of cranial nerve five. That's how you differentiate the functions of cranial nerve five and cranial nerve seven. So to test for the motor root of cranial nerve seven, ask the patient to frown, wrinkle the brow, close the eyes, show the teeth, purse the lips, or puff out the cheeks and observe for symmetry, meaning one part, whatever occurs in one part of your face should also occur on the other side. So which simply means if that doesn't happen, then suspect Bell's Palsy. Now, if this functional concept, for example, is turned into a select all that apply question or a question uh, characterized as um, uh, a question with multiple, requiring multiple responses. So it could be like this. It could be stated this way. Which of the following instructions would be appropriate if a patient is being assessed for the functions of cranial nerve seven? Okay, so asking the patient to frown, yes. Wrinkle the brow, yes. Close the eyes, yes. Show the teeth, yes. Purse the lips, yes. Puff out the cheeks, yes. But what about if one of the options would be clench the teeth? No, clenching the teeth is actually a function of cranial nerve five. Okay, so let's try answering a sample question. I'd like to highlight this sample question. Let's go over it. Which of the following cranial nerves are involved in eliciting the pupillary adaptation and accommodation? Select all that apply. Well, cranial nerve one is actually your olfactory nerve. So it's not related to pupillary adaptation and accommodation. Cranial nerve two is actually your optic nerve. Yes, we put a check. Cranial nerve five is your trigeminal nerve. It's not related to pupillary adaptation and accommodation. Your cranial nerve five is actually responsible for facial sensation and chewing, okay? So we put an X. Cranial nerve six, that's your abducens. It's responsible for eye movement, but it's not actually associated with pupillary adaptation and accommodation. So we put an X. And of course, cranial nerve three, that is your oculomotor nerve. It's responsible for eye movement and pupillary reflexes. So we put a check. So the answers are B and E, okay? Cranial nerves two and three. Okay, once again, it's shout out time. We'd like to congratulate one of our students who recently passed the NCLEX and she's from um, 
Pasig City in the Philippines, Vem Audrey Calibo USRN, who passed the NCLEX, okay? Uh, actually under the State Board of New Mexico. So congratulations, Vem Audrey. USRN. Wow. Okay. I just hope all of those who are listening to us or watching us could someday realize their dreams to also become a USRN. Now let's learn together. For more instructional videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gapos Mentors, and my Facebook page, Mentoray. You can actually send me some messages through my Facebook page, or you can send me some messages of requests, and I'd gladly cover what you want me to cover for your test to help you out, de decrease that stress and anxiety. Okay. So thank you once again for listening and watching our video. If you want a more comprehensive discussion of cranial nerve assessment, kindly check the link on the description of this video that links you to the comprehensive discussion of all 12 cranial nerves, okay? And I'd also like to uh, thank you for subscribing and asking your friends to subscribe because this is how we're going to sustain our, our video uh, production. Please do subscribe and tell your friends to subscribe and uh, spread the news. You are actually getting all of these pointers from professionals like us and we are more than willing to help you out. Turn your dreams to reality. Thank you very much. This is Mentor Ray.